Hey everyone, and welcome back. Today, we're jumping into Black Myth Wukong, a game that has taken the gaming industry by storm recently with just over 2.4 million peak players on Steam. It's secured the second all-time peak, falling right under PUBG. With almost 300,000 Steam reviews, 96% of that 300,000 have rated the game positive, and the game has sold over 10 million copies in just three days. So is this game really worth all this hype? I've just recently completed chapter two. It's taken me about 12 hours to do so. I'm really exploring all the paths in this game and taking my time with it and enjoying it. And boy, oh boy, let me tell you, this is a great game. Black Myth Wukong is a linear boss rush action game developed by passionate creators, and it really shows. This game brings you into the world of Chinese mythology, something I've never experienced before. The story is based on Journey to the West, and while I'm new to this mythology, I'm loving every second of it. Hopefully the people of China are proud of how their culture is being represented here because it's a stunning depiction in my eyes. So what's the gameplay like? Black Myth Wukong is all about mastering light and heavy attack combos with three unique stances, smash, pillar, and thrust. These stances really come into play when you face different bosses. For example, if a boss has ground attacks, switch to pillar stance as you can hold your heavy attack to perch atop your staff, avoiding any damage below you. If you need to keep some distance, thrust is your go-to stance. It's a defensive stance to quickly avoid enemy combos and attacks, and your heavy attack here has some decent range to it. By chapter 2, the combat really starts opening up to you. You'll have access to skills like Immobilize, which freezes enemies in place, and Rock Solid, which is essentially your parry move. And let's be clear, dodging is key here. There's no blocking outside of abilities like Rock Solid. The game really pushes you to dodge all attacks and equips you with just enough tools to diversify that a bit. Immobilize has a talent within its tree that allows you to do more damage if you immobilize the enemy just when they attack. Same goes for Rock Solid. If you time it right and block an incoming attack, then your damage will be increased for a second. You can also use Cloud Step to quickly avoid attacks, so while dodging is your main tool, there's enough here to keep the combat feeling fresh and fun, which is ultimately what matters the most. And again, I am only in Chapter 2. Who knows how many different spells we will get access to that can uniquely change up the combat. Be sure to subscribe as I will cover all of that in a future video as soon as the credits roll. And let's not forget about the transformations and spears you can unlock by defeating mini bosses. These abilities feel like ultimate moves that really change up the combat. One of my favorites is the Wandering White Spirit, where you take the form of Wandering White, bow with utmost devotion, and ram the foe with your bronze skull, dealing massive damage. It feels incredibly powerful. One of the transformations I like at the moment is the Rock Transformation. It, you guessed it, <laughs> transforms me into a rock, where I get access to its movesets for some time. In Wukong, healing is done by taking a drink from your gourd, which consists of drinks and soaks. Drinks are what you rely on during intense boss fights, while soaks add unique effects to your drink. Different gourds also offer varying effects that can change your playstyle from making you immune to fire to boosting your attack after a sip. Some gourds limit your healing uses but provide bonus perks, and while some can be upgraded for more uses, others remain fixed. This makes discovering new gourds exciting as you won't always have to start from scratch with upgrades. Drinks themselves vary in healing power, with some restoring as low as 25% of your max HP, while others can be upgraded to heal over 50%. It's actually really cool how Wukong's healing skills with your health here. Upgrading drinks can also unlock additional slots for soaks, which again, soaks apply unique effects after taking a sip. This game follows a pretty linear structure, progressing through chapter zones filled with minor cannon fodder enemies, mini bosses, and of course, tons and tons of major bosses. Over 90 bosses to be exact. And with each chapter, you'll unlock relics that provide big buffs to your character. For example, the two relics I have unlocked so far are the Craving Eyes and Fuming Ears relics. Each relic gives you three buffs to choose from, in which I chose Opportune Watcher from the first relic, which increases the amount of focus I earn upon landing consecutive light attacks. And from the second relic, I chose All Ears, which extends the iframe window of the first move of all varied combos. Basically, I am choosing the ones that enhance my character's combo effectiveness as going for combos in this game is what I find to be very fun. The leveling system revolves around collecting sparks that you can use to upgrade your health, stamina, stances, transformations, and even your spells. These sparks are achieved by leveling up your character, which can be done by finding new meditation spots, killing monsters, and completing the story chapters. And the best part? 
you can respec for free whenever you want, meaning there's no grind or farming needed to change your build. You're not wasting your time here. Black Myth Wukong respects your time. Want to try out a new spell and realize you don't like it? No worries. You can simply respec and put those sparks somewhere else. I love this so much. Everyone is busy and has their priorities and gaming to most people is a way to relax and unwind from their already busy and chaotic lives. So I'm very appreciative that the ability to respec whenever I want to with no cost associated with it is in the game. Gear crafting is simple and rewarding. You kill monsters, gather resources, and craft gear sets that provide bonuses when worn together. The progression feels natural, and the game offers just enough exploration to keep things interesting. When I play games like this, I try and go down all the avenues I can within the level, collecting all the resources I see along the path. One of my favorite gear sets at the moment is the Swift Pilgrim set. It's one you get very early on in the game, and so far, it's still my go-to set for most boss encounters. There are four gear slots, so you can craft gear for your head, body, arms, and legs. For example, you can see here, if you are wearing at least two Swift Pilgrim gear pieces, then you will receive the set bonus that moderately increases sprint speed. If you wear all four gear pieces, you will get the set bonus we just talked about, and the set bonus that when sprinting, you increase your next attack's damage. You can also see that there is a unique effect on some armors that as long as you are wearing that piece, you will get this effect. So if I just wear the Pilgrim's headband, I will get the unique effect that allows me to heal while sprinting. So there is actually a lot here to change up your playstyle. The game provides a journal as well, which acts as a monster codex. This is why I try and kill all the enemies within the chapter, so I can unlock them on this codex. And by doing this, by simply just playing and exploring the levels, you will earn enough resources to craft the necessary armor and upgrades you need to progress your character. The visuals in this game are top notch. The character and boss designs are creative and each chapter offers a unique and breathtaking environment. The transitions from cutscenes to gameplay and gameplay to cutscene are seamless and the level of polish is simply just impressive. I mean, just look at this. I personally haven't had any major performance issues, but I know others have. Personally, the game has run smoothly and the lighting, particle effects, and overall presentation are easily 10 out of 10 for me. Hopefully they've released a couple of patches by the time you're seeing this video that address the optimization so people can fully immerse themselves in this world without having any game-breaking performance issues. To wrap things up, Black Myth Wukong is a breath of fresh air in the current gaming landscape. It's a complete, feature-packed game with no predatory monetization. You pay one price, and that's it. No microtransactions, no FOMO-inducing content, just pure fun and complete gameplay. With the bosses I've seen so far, the animations, style, particle effects are just amazing, each boss being unique from one another. So far, no fight has felt the same. From the stunning visuals to the fluid combat, this game is setting a new standard. It's easily an S-tier title for me, and right now, this is probably my game of the year. At the very least, it's a game of the year contender for sure. But I'm only two chapters in, so we'll see if that holds up until the end. All right, everyone. So that about does it for this video. I'm going to start chapter three tonight, so be sure to subscribe as I will be releasing a follow-up video to this one after I finish the game. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of Black Myth Wukong so far. Have you played it? Are you thinking about getting it? Let me know down below. Again, for me, it's fun. It's gorgeous. It has zero BS. So, so far, it's worth every penny. I actually kind of wish that I got the collector's edition for this game, which is something I don't usually do. Um, so that's saying something. As always, take excellent care of yourselves. Call your mother or someone you love. And goodbye.